Some nonprofit organizations are really feeling the loss of local newspapers. Last month, Metroland Media Group ended print publications of community newspapers across the province. Robert Pye is executive director of Watersheds Canada, a charity that works to protect Canada's lakes and rivers. And Suzanne Bourbonnet is with the Community Home Support Lanark County, which works with seniors and adults with developmental disabilities. Thank you both for joining us tonight. You're welcome. Robert, I'll start with you. How is your organization feeling the loss of local print newspapers? Well, that, the loss is yet to be seen, but uh, the announcement uh, in the past month it certainly has us concerned. Uh, we are a national organization, but we work at the local level. So that, that local media attention is very important to our organization. And it's actually in 20 years, uh, we think that our success our success as an organization and building up our list and our donor profile comes from local media attention in the in the print uh, format. So uh, I, I'm I am concerned. Our colleagues are concerned that without that uh, without that local uh, uh, community newspaper opportunity, that that will be a loss for us. And Suzanne, you're feeling the same about this. I am uh, on a couple of different levels. We our clientele, the, uh, our seniors and adults with physical disabilities or living with life limiting illness, they are already socially iso isolated because of all those things I just mentioned. Mm. Not feeling well, you, you don't go out of your your apartment, and you, you, the isolation just becomes worse and worse. Of course, yeah. Um, and there was a time where well, there still is a small amount of time where people go to the the where the newspapers are. I'll use an example of apartments. They go there, down there, they get their newspaper, they chat. I, I fear even those, it might sound trivial, but those uh, experiences dealing with your neighbors on a day-to-day, -day, regular basis like that does get, does create opportunities for so socialization. So I think without the local paper, there's going to be more isolation in our communities. Mm -hmm. And aside from the socialization aspect, Robert, how could this impact your bottom line when it comes to applying for grants, for example? Well, thank you for bringing that up. Our organization, like all charities, uh, has to work really hard to uh, remain competitive when we try to get the attention of corporate donations and, and uh, uh, funders through grant writing processes. and. Um, putting in a uh, messaging about what we are able to ch achieve with respect to earned media and in most cases that comes from local media i should mention that in the last uh, year and a half alone we've had uh, 20 um, media interviews earned media opportunities that have been achieved by community newspapers in many cases that have put us on the front page of local newspapers and we express that to our funders so without the uh, the opportunity to um, uh, provide that uh, uh, that extra delivery in terms of our reach and our impressions for our funders, that will certainly be uh, an impact that we need to consider. Mm -hmm. And Suzanne, you said you've already seen some of the impact in the way of attracting volunteers. Is that right? That's right. So um, we would always put an article in the paper annually, sometimes twice a year, reaching out to the community to uh, secure volunteers. Our agency is volunteer based. For example, we have a driving program to get people to medical appointments. And and those free articles, like it, as an article, there's no cost. Um, <clears throat> they would they would provide that coverage throughout our, our, our area, our catchment area. And now I think I've, that would be lost in the in the different layers. Um, you know, we live very remotely here, we're a very a rural area. There's some people that do not have internet connection because of the it's just not available there or it's not reliable cuts out and so on the cost <clears throat> like in the land or highlands it's not it it's not accessible to everybody so i fear or the local paper everyone did get that yeah in their mailbox either delivered or at the local store or other local kind of hangout so it's really going to affect as <clears throat> robert said the bar bottom line because donors if they become aware of us, <clears throat> excuse me, through the paper, they would donate. Volunteers looking for opportunities would see that article and give us a call. I think um, it would affect our fundraising as well as our volunteer um, recruitment. And then as well, reaching out to seniors and disabled adults who still rely on the, heart, the paper copy 
you're not online for those reasons I just mentioned. Yeah, and so, I mean, what does the future look like then, Robert? How do you get your messages out there now? Well, Watersheds Canada is is proud to live in both both places. We have a great digital reach. We have uh, a great website, a great social media. But again, our uh, we can't forget where we came from. Our uh, roots are uh, local based, and and a lot of our um, volunteers and supporters live in two places. Um, they live uh, in the city, uh, for example, but then travel to the rural communities for their cottage or their lake home, for example. And uh, uh, having access to that print copy newspaper, even if it's a week old, still provides the coverage that we need to uh, demonstrate the volunteers that have perhaps been in that community in the week uh, the week before them getting there um, to be involved in uh, a fisheries restoration work or shoreline restoration work. So that local newspaper for us is the ultimate form of messaging. It's the place that you can actually, it really brings things to life. It validates things that you might see on social media, but then when it comes to opening that paper on a Saturday morning with a coffee in hand, that's when the impact, I think, really hits home. And uh, so we are uh, not trying to live in the past. We live in both worlds. We live in a digital space, but we're, we're still an organization that depends on direct mail. Okay. Well, we'll have to see what happens. I'm sure you'll both be busy uh, planning the next uh, next little bit in terms of uh, posters, email distribution lists, social media, and uh, the good old-fashioned word of mouth. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Robert Pye is Executive Director of Watersheds Canada, and Suzanne Bourbonnet is with Community Home Support, Lanark County.